So I just got done playing around with Epic Games' new MetaHumans system, and it is genuinely very, very impressive. When I was watching the trailer, there were moments where I wasn't sure if I was looking at a video or something simulated, and that is really, really meaningful. So obviously, for years now, we've been getting pretty close, especially in films, to realistic looking humans, but they always just look a bit off. Now, it turns out for a million very subtle psychological reasons for the way the brain works, that if something is just very slightly off with the way a face moves or light interacts with skin, we can detect it, and it throws up red flags so hard that not only do we find it slightly unconvincing, we find it physically repulsive. It's actually worse sometimes to get almost realistic than it is to make things look not that realistic or stylized or representative. And for the first time watching this trailer, I wasn't actually sure, just for small moments, if this real-time uh, simulated human was a film or something coming out of a game engine. And that's huge. Now, I'd argue that for the majority of the history of video games, we've not even come close to realistic humans, and we haven't even come close to the Uncanny Valley. Especially in the older generations, it was always just representational or stylized enough that you knew it wasn't trying to convince you it was a real-life living, breathing human. It was just a vehicle for a story and a character moment. But in the last couple of years, things have got kind of weird because they are getting closer and closer to being realistic and therefore they're getting more and more unrealistic to our lizard brains. And after playing around with this MetaHumans system, it gets a lot closer than I've ever seen before to uh, leaving the Uncanny Valley. I'm not sure it's still there yet, and I don't think I've got the technical expertise to tell you exactly why that is, but it is so unbelievably close that maybe it's just about enough. So according to the announcement from Epic Games, it looks like this is going to be a cloud-based system, meaning you'll probably generate all of these characters online. But I think the thing that I find quite interesting is the system is said to be scalable. Running all the way from at the top, you've got virtual production, things like making uh, TV shows or films using motion capture, running through to high-end AAA video games and next generation video games. And then at the lower end, you've got mobile. So if this system is as scalable, I think what this will do for a lot of, especially smaller scale developers, is give them access to make really great quality humans at whatever platform it is that they're working on. So what's in the demo? I'm pretty sure if I had to make an educated guess right now that the digital humans that are in the initial demo are probably from the very high end. I don't know if they'd be from the virtual production level, but I would guess that they are. I mean, obviously they look pretty fantastic, but I think more than that, the frame rates weren't particularly good when I was running a full ray tracing scene like this. And that makes me think that they're pulling out all the stops for visual fidelity. I'm personally quite curious to see what they're going to look like at the video game scale areas. Uh, I want to see how next gen games are going to look. I want to see how mobile games are going to look with this. And uh, personally for me as well, I want to know uh, how usable these kinds of things might be in virtual reality. I do think we're probably less than a year or two away from TV shows that are fully produced virtually. Motion captured in virtual space, edited in virtual space, uh, acted in virtual space, using character systems like this. I guess the initial ones will be a lot more bespoke and custom, but all of a sudden, a tool like this means that it's not only the massive film and TV studios that might have access to this kind of tech, but it's the much smaller scale developers that might as well. I think there's still going to be a bit of a gap in terms of big studios versus small studios based on the kind of customization that you can have with ultra high-end virtual characters. I think that's going to be one of the main separating factors over the next few years. Um, for example, in a AAA studio or a big film studio, you've got the budget to put months and months into an ultra high quality, uh, realistic character production pipeline. And I would be very surprised if there weren't a lot of game studios out there at the moment with characters that look about this good for upcoming games that haven't been announced yet. But on the smaller scale for uh, studios with smaller budgets or more constrained budgets, um, you usually have to make a choice. 
Do you want to go for ultra high realistic characters, in which case you might only have one or two, or you might have to use a, a pre-packaged character or a semi-custom solution like this? Or do you want to make them more stylized so that you can afford to make them more quickly? And a tool like this definitely might bridge the gap quite a lot between the big and small developers, but that customization is still gonna be absolutely key. I think one of the most interesting things on the announcement was that there are currently 28 hairstyles and I believe it was a number of preset faces, which is how character generation systems usually work. And that's absolutely fine. From there it can scale up, but it will rely on Epic Games continuing to make new content for this system. Personally, the thing that absolutely excites me about this is if you were to scale up the system to make it possible to make these kind of characters for online games or for immersive virtual communication, you know, next generation virtual reality stuff. And I think in that respect, that's probably the most exciting part about this uh, new system is it's definitely today amazing for video games and it's amazing for virtual production, but it's also a glimpse into the kind of technology that we could have five to 10 years from now for making avatars of ourselves for VR worlds or making avatars of ourselves for virtual communication or anything else like that. And if you can scale up these systems and iterate on them, we're looking at a future where uh, the internet or the metaverse is so much more realistic and convincing compared to what it is now. And I think it's definitely worth asking if this is what's being announced right now, what is, you know, in development right now, but not even coming out or being announced for the next five years? What, what kind of uh, technology behind the scenes is laying the foundations for the next generation of digital production? And the final question I was asking myself as I was watching this is, can I use it in what I do? So, yeah, I think I can. Uh, for context, for anyone that doesn't know, I'm a virtual reality developer. And I'm currently building a pretty photorealistic looking virtual reality game that's pushing the visual boundaries of the platform as much as I can afford to. And I am actually an example of the type of small studio that I alluded to a second ago, in that I've had to make a decision about how much of a pipeline for character production I can actually put together. And so far I've designed a system where characters are represented in much more abstract ways and much less realistic ways. And creatively speaking, I think that's still the right decision for my project. But looking at this technology, it opens up new kinds of options. And suddenly something that I didn't think it was capable of doing yesterday could be something that I could now feasibly do tomorrow. And that is, I think, what is most exciting about this technology. So to conclude, I think if you are someone that just plays a lot of video games or likes video games, or also just in general likes TV and filmmaking, I think if you notice relatively good quality digital humans in the next couple of years, there's a fair chance it comes from a system like this or uh, something similar, more bespoke in-house. And I think we'll be seeing a lot more Unreal Engine based virtual production in the next year or two. You know, the groundwork's already been laid with things like Star Wars, but I think we'll see a lot more of it coming soon. But then beyond that, if you are a game developer yourself or a filmmaker yourself, I would absolutely spend some time looking at this technology. Virtual humans and uh, what they can do in video games is going to be one of the hot topics of the next few years, I would guess. And whether or not your project needs it right now, I don't think mine does, I think it's something worth just brushing up on to have a basic knowledge of because it will become fairly important as time passes. And who knows where it'll go in the future. And finally, do I think this uh, system has crossed the Uncanny Valley? Hard to say. I think at points and from angles, yes, it uh, has got closer than I've ever seen a game system come to crossing the Uncanny Valley. But watching them move, I still think it's 99% there and not quite right. And unfortunately, I absolutely lack the expertise to know how to fix that. But I can say that looking at this, I find it much less horrifying than most other games or even pre-rendered films. So that's brilliant. Overall, very well done, and I look forward to seeing more announcements of this project in the next few months. But for now, thanks very much for watching, I hope you found this video informative, and I'll be making another video in the next couple of weeks, so until then, take care, thanks a lot.